Hello, everybody. It's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to take a look at uh, three different types of files that you can work with in Bobcad. Uh, STL, DXF, and a SLD PRT file, or a solid. So to begin with, let's look at the... Uh, Let's look at the STL. Now, STL files, you can machine them in Bobcad. Uh, you can open them right up and machine them. Generally speaking, they would be used for 3D projects, okay? And there are some characteristics of working with STLs which defines that. Uh, generally speaking, if you're going to do 2D machining, and if you look at this part, this is definitely uh, a 2D part. There's uh, pockets and uh, some holes that need to be drilled. You would either work off uh, surface edges or you'd work off a wireframe. When you uh, have an STL file, you cannot extract the wireframe from the STL. Uh, so. Uh, it's not really that that's a problem, it just doesn't give you the same control that you would have with typical uh, 2D type routines. So you would set this up as uh, 3D routines. The other thing you would look at is when you run this through uh, the stock wizard, if you choose rectangular stock, it, it's not picking up the minimum maximum of that part. Uh, we would either need to use a solid stock and have a, a solid body uh, STL file for our starting stock, um, or what you're going to end up doing is just sketching a boundary and, and that's what I'm gonna do here this is uh, let's say six by two and a half all right so we'll say 2.75 and we'll make this 5.75 so I would draw up a rectangle first and then I'll run this through the stock wizard and then in this case I'm gonna just pick my wireframe to set up my boundary okay so again this is working with uh, an STL file I'll come in and uh, uh, set my dimension for Z, and then from here I can pick my zero, that's fine, and then I'll, instead of using like the drilling routines or the two axis routines, I would use a three axis routine. Uh, in this case, I will just grab the advanced rough to rough the shape out, and uh, I'll compute the default settings here and you'll see that it will lay some cutter path down uh, on this part to rough it out, okay? So the next thing we, we wanna look at is uh, working with a DXF. Now again, you can work with the STL files. I would recommend it for more 3D shapes. Uh, if it's more 2D type routines, then I would prefer to work with a DXF file because it will give me more control, like cutter comp and where I lead in and lead out and uh, different things like that. So let's create a, uh, let's actually open a new file. This one will choose DXF and we'll grab the same part. Now my background is black so we're not going to see the geometry so I'll just select everything and change the color of it so I can see it on my screen. Okay. So here we have a part print, a couple of different views. We really only need to work with the top view here so I'll create a new layer. I'll grab, uh, I'll grab my geometry I want to work with and then I'll throw this over to its own layer and then I'll turn everything else off. Now, just like I rotate parts so that it matches the um, first setup, uh, same thing in this example, I'm gonna zero the part. To zero the part, I'll just uh, join a line from one end to the next. This is just construction geometry, and then I'll uh, translate this from where it's located uh, to zero. Okay. So now I have it on zero. The next step would be to uh, set up the job, run it through the stock wizard. You know, I can add additional stock on the top or bottom, you know, and then go ahead and set what my origin is. And then I can start uh, machining from here. Okay. Now, uh, because we just have a, a 2D DXF file, we don't have the depth in the part. So let me just drop this down a little bit here. So uh, I would end up, the, you know, usually I'd have the print next to me and I could read the dimensions and just type them in. A lot of times what I'll do with DXF files as well is I'll create a layer called, um, you know, holes. And then what I'll do is I'll move all the holes that are uh, on that uh just grab all these holes and I'll move them over to the layer that's called holes. Okay, and then I'll, you know, inside pocket. 
I'm gonna grab the stuff that's on the inside. Oh, uh, I got my filter still on. Let's do this again. Uh, not necessarily uh, a necessary step, not necessarily a necessary step, uh, but it does make it a little bit easier when you go to do your selection. You can go through and pick up what you want, okay? So that's working with a DXF file, and again, we can lay down our cutter path. Now that we have wireframe, we can come in and we can select our edges here and pick the strategy that we want and I'll just compute the defaults and you can see that we have our pocket generated. Now in this case this is actually an open pocket so on this side and this side the tool can pass through there. Uh, it's really easy to change that. We'll just select those two edges and then we'll turn this line style to a dotted line. Okay so now we have a dotted line. We'll reselect our geometry and then we're going to just edit our pattern to be an advanced pocket and then that will allow the tool to pass through on those sides. Okay, So we went from an STL in this example where we used all 3D toolpath, then we went to a DXF where we're going to just separate out our boundaries and do our 2D toolpaths. Uh, the next file we're going to look at is working with a solid model. In this case it happens to be a, an SLD PRT, but it could be an IGIS, it could be a STEP, it could be a Parasolids, uh, whatever format you have available to you. So again, I'll, I'll take my model and I'll orientate it to the first setup. Uh, from here, I'll run my stock wizard and I'll go ahead and set up where my zero is. And then uh, now I can uh, load in my strategies. Now, I'm gonna go back to this first file here and I'm just gonna uh, copy this feature. And then I'm going to go to this file and I'm just gonna paste it in and then I'll uh, select this surface here and uh, I'll recompute and you can see we're able to generate our tool path based off that surface. Now because again it's an open pocket uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is creating a new layer and then I'll extract the wireframe uh, from that face. Let me see if I got it. Nope I didn't get it. Let me do it again. Uh, utilities extract edges single all right, so now I've grabbed the wireframe for that face. And, you know, to kind of clean things up here, you can turn your transparency down on your stock. And then if you want, you can turn off your axis indicator so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. But now I have my wireframe, so I'll go ahead and select on this edge here and this edge here. And we'll turn that to a line style dotted. Then we'll... Uh, Reselect, uh, remove, reselect, shift click. All right, so we'll 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 gather our um, toolpath again, and now you can see it's starting off the part. But the difference is, you know, I want to set where my zero is. So when you're working on uh, the wireframe DXF file, when you go to define your depth, when we're up here at the feature, uh, we're going to just read the print and we're going to type in what the amount is and then we'll compute it and that will set up what our depth is. When you're working off the solid, uh, what you can do is you can actually pick it. So we can say pick bottom and then we can grab the bottom and it will pick up the, the depth automatically based off the, the geometry that's on the screen and then we can compute it. So three different types of geometry, uh, STL files, uh, DXF files, and surface files. STL files are good, uh, DXF files are better, and uh, the best would be working with the solids directly. So if you have any questions about working with any of these types of files, or if I can help uh, in, you know, explain things in more detail, uh, reach me at my Facebook or my YouTube or in the forum that this thread is posted in, or this video is posted in. Thank you so much today, guys. Have a good day.